Uh, so I have the, the pleasure here of introducing uh, Mark Stoner from BioCrowd uh, to touch on um, our decentralized science working group. So Mark, uh, floor is yours. So uh, BioCrowd is a startup. We're uh, uh, helping to find cures for diseases faster at a lower cost. Uh, we have three MDs involved. We got four PhDs. What we do is our, our target market is clinical research, kind of funding early stage research. Uh, it's in, in life sciences, biotech, it's, it's a well-known term, the valley of death, which means grants, they might get three, four NIH grants, um, but it's still high risk. VCs, they're about no risk or coming in later. And then this is kind of the summary of uh, what the end result is. Uh, the digital asset tokens, bringing more liquidity between development phases, uh, token holders can buy, sell, exchange. So this means that uh, uh, early people may be medical background, they invest, they know the science, early drug, drug discovery, uh, it passes to a clinical study, um, et cetera, et cetera, as you see as it moves forward. So the point is the liquidity that people can come in and out of the market, because if people are investing for five to 10 years, you've got a much more limited pool of investors that private equity and so forth that can do that. But if you have small, smaller quote unquote retail investors, if they think they can be out within a couple of years, you certainly increase the flow of uh, potential opportunities. How decentralized science or DSI improves science, you can collaborate with peers from all over the globe and dynamic teams, and I've got some examples. Funding decisions are made online, transparent, new funding mechanisms. Sharing laboratory services uh, uh, is much easier, transparent. New models for publishing I spoke about. Um, they can earn tokens and reputation for peer reviewing work. So they see the tokens, they, they earn, and, and we have it set up already. It's, a, it's called a bounty board. Uh, there's a website called DWORK where we're, we're using them. Basically, we can reward if somebody reviews, somebody's screening three different funding submission proposals, we can reward them, say, with $250 or marketing people, other people along the way. So that's a very... Uh, another benefit of the, the digital asset tokens, uh, intellectual property, uh, they can generate and distribute according to the, the transparent terms. So with the DSI, somebody in India can apply for funding a scientist. We evaluate it, we can connect them with somebody in France or the Bay Area or MD Anderson that has that experience. But the point is that they can get rewarded monetization from the beginning, 10 years later, even if it's sold a couple of times, if that's the way the deal is set up. Um, the other thing is sharing all of the research, including data from unsuccessful efforts. Um, and I know NFT is kind of a scary word for a lot of people. A lot of people think first thing they think of is uh, maybe Snoop Dogg. Um, but IP, NFTs, NFTs, it's just a technology. So what it means is in this example of fractionalization. So this is, for example, a lab, um, whatever, university lab, independent lab, whatever. So if it's a, uh, uh, it, oh, sorry, if it's a uh, uh, early on, sorry, I'm just hitting. There we go. Um, if if it, it's a, uh, uh, it creates a fractional opportunity. So people on the early end, what I said is the the people that uh, uh, are, are getting some some percentage on the front end, and other people. But you see, this can be. It could be four people, five people, but this is kind of the extreme example, all these different people. You think about postdocs in a lab, they're, they're getting educated, but they're not making any money, really. This could be something that you can divide it up by the lab. It could be a product line, a specific area. The fractionalization gives a lot more opportunities. From an SEC perspective, an NFT is not a security. If you fractionalize it, it is. So that's another part of the process. Um, the mission of the NDF DSI working group, um, we're looking for, for people to collaborate with, um, build a blockchain tool set infrastructure uh, and an economic model that monetizes ecosystem and contributors, help activate, reward, and empower a global community contributors. Uh, this is the example for the NDF working group too. So if you go, you can sign up uh, on our website uh, biocrowd.com, and I can put into the chat some, some other links too. Um, obviously, we're looking for kind of highly cited top clinical researchers, 
but we're also looking for business development people, people with software, technical, scientists, uh, people that are, are grant writers maybe that can help some of the companies we work with obtain grants. So if this is of interest, um, I would sign up or just fill in your contact information and then we can we can follow up and kind of figure out uh, what role you play. But don't don't think you have to be a, a top scientist. I'd, I'd say anybody and everybody at this point, we'll kind of work through it. BioCrowd key focus areas for funding and support. Um, rare diseases, rare diseases. There's over 7,000 rare diseases according to the SEC, or I'm sorry, according to the FDA. Um, a rare disease is categorized as less than 200,000 people. Um, so for the digital asset tokens, it, it works for that especially. That's why it's an early, it's something early we're working on um, because we can monetize, we can reward people early on and also just getting the patient groups involved. They're highly motivated, the patient group, people that have these diseases and pharma companies, you know, it's just the economic model they're passing because it's not economically feasible for them. This is something that we can activate. So, you know, I see where NSF uh, grants could be kind of something that would be, uh, uh, we might uh, be able to qualify for, et cetera, et cetera. But the idea with the consumer side, we, again, we need to establish the beachhead, the research community, build the economic model, pro find product market fit. Um, uh, the consumer side is that imagine if you could invest in your own cure, then you could help fund research to cure a genetic disease affecting you or your family from your DNA, while also earning a return on your life-saving life investment or impact investment. In other words, you get your DNA, you find out that you've got a health risk. It could be pancreatic cancer. So then you go into a, a, a DAO, basically like an ETF, uh, funding, support, directing within that area. It could be a rare disease. 200,000, 150,000 people have. You could help launch that with the tools we're providing, participate in that, find others. Uh, uh, so again, the, the mechanism, the technology is quite amazing, the flexibility, what we can do. The other side of that is that um, with the IP, the, with the NFT, the intellectual property and so forth, if there's a success and hopefully as it goes forward, teaming with the right researchers and so forth, if it's successful, you can profit on the back end when it's sold to big pharma or whatever. So again, a little kind of blue sky, but the technology, we can do this.